Welcome everyone. This week I've got two awesome anglers, brothers that come from the West Coast. This is episode nine, catching up with Chris Jones. And this week I've got one of the greatest fishing families in professional bass fishing. It is Jimmy and Skeet Reese, the Reese brothers. What's up, guys? Woo! <laughs> What's up, Chris? Baby? Man, hey, listen to me. COVID-19 shut our country down back in mid-March. And uh, we, we reopened it this past weekend in the fishing world with the Toyota Series. We saw Jacob Wheeler um, go down to Pickwick Lake and get that win. So we are now back in business, guys. But what have you guys been doing, man, the last couple months? Skeet, what have you been doing? I've been, uh, <laughs> I've been working my butt off. We, got a, uh, we have a house that... Uh, up at Clear Lake, it was so my dad was there, and then before he passed away, and then uh, so now we're turning it into a vacation rental. So I've been up there working on decks and docks and remodeling the house. I'm whooped. I haven't done that much physical labor in like 25 years. So that's what I've been doing for the last two weeks: getting a little bit of fishing, a little filming in for uh, all my social media platforms. Uh, the last, oh, I guess two months, and. Uh, I don't know. I'm ready to get back on it. So we start up next week in Florida yep. for Major League Fishing, and then uh, then I get to come play with you guys. Absolutely, man. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Super Tournaments. I know you got the heavy hitters coming up, man. Um, good stuff, man. Finally, getting back to some normalcy. Yeah. I want to know what Jim's been doing. Jimmy, what have you been up to, buddy? Yeah, what have you been doing? <laughs> Playing with go. Oh. I've been fishing by Skeet's new dock, uh, catching all the fish around Skeet's dock, been watching them work, you know, focusing on, on eating. So, you know, those are the things I've been doing. Because, you know, I want to be his best cheerleader, you know. So, you know, I figured I'd be there to support him. So that's what I've been doing. I got And I guess the dock is on clear. Well, Actually, it's been busy. It is. But he was nice oh, enough. He brought he brought dinner the other night. He brought ribs and all that. So we had a cookout on the back on the deck. And so uh yeah, him and his wife Kathy that came over and hung out and we enjoyed the evening there. But you know, I also know when it came to the physical labor thing, it was like crickets. No, hey Ski, you want some help? <laughs> like nothing. I got nothing. That's not true. That's not true. That is true. That's why I dropped the dinner because of physical labor. <laughs> Tom out man, no fights on the uh, on the podcast. Right? Uh, <laughs> That's great, man. Uh, hey, let me read some stat yeah. lines about my uh, guest today. I got, five, I got five feet of hay. What's that? I said I'm gonna read some stat lines. Let me re let me introduce. Uh, let me introduce you guys the proper way, man. Jimmy Reese has won a half million dollars with FLW. That includes four wins. He's got a Phoenix Bass Fishing League win. He's got two wins in the same year in the Toyota Series, and that was in 2006, back-to-back -back wins at Clear Lake in the California Delta. 2007, you won another Toyota Series event where you caught 92 pounds at the California Delta. I'll never forget that way in. 23 top tens and two Forest Wood Cups. Uh, 2016, you finished 11th. You almost made championship Sunday in the top 10 cut there. Six years you've been fishing the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit and uh, one of the best West Coast anglers in the history of the sport, no doubt about it. The old FLW Series National Guard Western Division, we had that out there for four years, and you got a top 10 every year in the four events that we had out there every year. You top 10 every year, a lot of success, and uh, one of the guys that always comes through boat check, smiling, ready to go fishing, Jimmy Reese. Then we got an icon, a legend. Yeah, they're right. Absolutely. We got an icon and a legend, Jimmy's brother, Skeet Reese, who is one of top five, one of the top five all-time leading money winners. He's at $3.5 million dollars. Incredible, a 19-time classic qualifier. Um, he was the 2007 BASS Angler of the Year, won the 2009 Classic. Um, 74 top 10s, 115 top 20s. Um, he's got a Major League Fishing win, 
He currently fishes the Bass Pro Tour, one of the most recognizable, um, iconic figures in professional bass fishing. And by the way, um, your general tire commercials, love them. <laughs> it is Steve Reese joining me, man, on Catching Up with Chris Jones. I've got two great West Coast anglers here. Uh, one of the top five all-time leading money winners, Pete Reese. Hey, listen, does that just mean that you're old? <laughs> you know what? Everybody seems to be saying that I'm old. I don't feel old. I'm like, I'm still like a teenager in my head, but my body is maybe saying different things now. And uh, so, yeah, I just realized, you know, when I've been doing some of these interviews, I, I, I did an interview just that came out this week with Mark Daniels Jr. And and realizing that, you know, now, you know, Jimmy and I, we're, we're inspiring the younger generations. And, and Mark Daniels is 12, 14 years younger than me. But he was, I was an inspiration for him. I'm like, damn, that means you're getting old. When you're inspiring <laughs> those younger generations, you're like, man, I have been out here a long time doing this. But, um, yeah, I'm still young at heart, though. So that's all I matters. Absolutely. Both of you guys are still young in age, man. There's no substitute for experience, but both of you guys. Yeah, but look, 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 at, look how great Jimmy is, though. <laughs> hey, hey, those are highlights. Those are highlights. Come on. Hey, you forgot one stat on Skeet, just so you know. I went, I went back and looked at the FLW stats for Skeet, and so it was 19, what, 97? He won, actually, one of the, uh, I guess, VFL. And he was sporting his vanilla ice haircut, just so you know. So you got to. Oh, take yeah, it. I was, and I had my MC Hammer pants. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Hurts. Chris is like, this is going nowhere right now. <laughs> <laughs> we know you love to dance, man, and you hey. always look good. And the truth yeah. is this: the truth is, you got yeah. you got started at a really young age, both of you guys. We did. I joined uh, Redwood Empire yeah. Bass Club when I was 14 years old. Uh, so that's when I fished my first tournament. Um, you know, I think I was into tournaments a little bit longer, you know, before Jim. And then when I got a boat, um, and then that's when Jim started coming in. We started fishing team tournaments together then. So that was, I don't know, 32 years ago. We got I got a, my first boat and started fishing tournaments then. <laughs> yeah, you're old. You are old. Okay. <laughs> well, I tell you what, both of you guys are, um, yeah, you're good role models, man. For We got a major youth movement going on in this sport right now between the high school and the college stuff that we have uh, with FLW. And, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you guys, you are still young in age and you are very, you know, you're great anglers, very experienced. But the fact of the matter is, man, you guys, I mean, it's one of those things, guys look up to you guys. They do, man. Skeet, Skeet and Jimmy Reese, there, there's, the, the, you guys are a great fishing family, but you know what? You, you're good on camera. Um, you, you're always smiling. You're always positive about the sport. People love you guys, man. And so, yeah, it's one of those things where you guys are helping take this industry to the next level um, on and off the water. And there's something to be said for that. Let's, hey, Jimmy, let's talk about your Toyota Series dominance, man. And I've got some stats that I wrote down here. I think this is pretty impressive, man. Um, a two-time Angler of the Year, you won the Angler of the Year back-to-back, -back, 2006 and 2007. The next year, you finished third in the points race. And uh, you, have, you have finished in the top ten in the Toyota Series Western Division seven times, man, uh, in your career. A lot of top tens out there. Your Delta dominance, your Clear Lake dominance. It's one of those things where – but. But, you know, it's one of those things where you're really, really, really good out west, but you come back east and have success, too. And we'll talk to Skeet about that in a second, too, man. Skeet has dominated the bass fishing world, east coast to west coast. But, uh, but Jim, you talk about how important that Toyota series was to get in your career to where it's at now in the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I – Still think experience on the water is by far the most important thing. Um, I mean, the internet has changed things, but I still think having experience is, is more helpful uh, when you're in the moment on the water and having to adjust. And, you know, 
we were fortunate. I mean, we have bodies of water, the California Delta, Clear Lake, which have a lot of vegetation, which, you know, basically is similar to what you fish in Texas and Florida, um, in, you know, Georgia, like, like Seminole, but, you know, so it, it, you can take those um, uh, styles of fishing back east and, 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 that, will, and that did help us. Um, and then we have Lake Shasta, Lake Orville, which are great spotted bass fisheries. And again, you know, now we're, you know, we're fishing Lake Lanier and uh, we just fished Lake Martin, two great lakes. And so, yeah, you know, I, I honestly, we're, we're trendsetters in California. A lot of the techniques have started in California. You know, I just looked at the drop shot, you know, Aaron Martin's pretty much started that. I mean, the Coda. Um, and, you know, so, it, I mean, if you want to be a finesse fisherman or, or a power fisherman, you know, growing up in the Western United States is very, very helpful. And because you can, you can take that style and more importantly, take the confidence of, of doing well on the West Coast and go fish anywhere. So it's helped me a, a ton. You know, I'm, I'm still getting acclimated to some of the lakes out there and I, I feel comfortable now, like, you know, like I really know the lakes now, but uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to reap the rewards really soon. And, uh, you know, of course, make the, all the championships and, and then hopefully join that guy, come up there on the, uh, the major league fishing. So, yeah, it's been great. I mean, you know, it, it did start out with the BFLs, you know, and then, uh, which I, I really am going to start lobbying to get those back out west because we really want them. Everybody on property want the BFLs on the west coast. So, um, and then, you know, again, the high school, college, BFL, you know, and then uh, on up. So, but yeah, it's been, it's been great. Um, you know, a uh, lot of success and, you know, very fortunate. Um, so, yeah, it's been good. Absolutely. Your, uh, your Toyota Series Western, uh, Western Division dominance has been incredible. And uh, I got to experience a lot of those weigh-ins, man. I think I crowned you champion two or three times out there. And, and that was against some of the best talent some of the biggest names on the West Coast, man. There are great anglers out there. And it's kind of funny, man, because when you guys, you know, at boat check in the morning, you guys come through, it's funny because if I look on your deck, you either got really small baits or really big baits. <laughs> <laughs> One extreme or the other, man. That's just the way it is. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. Well, let's talk, hey, Skeet, let's talk about, man, your so, history with FLW. You're, you you have a great history with FLW, man. It really launched your career. Uh, the Phoenix Bass Fishing League, I think you fished six events. Let me get my stats here. No, five tourneys, five tournaments. You got four top tens in five tournaments and two wins, <laughs> including a sixth-place finish at the, uh, the All-American. That is incredible. Two wins, all right, two more sixth-place finishes. So in five events, four top tens, two wins, and an All-American. That's great stuff, Steve. I, I didn't realize I didn't fish that many. I was like, those are really good stats. I wish I could keep those stats on, across the board on everything. <laughs> um, it really was. I mean, back then it was the Red Man Tournament Trail, but obviously yeah. the beach bells. And, um, and that was, I still remember, like, the, the one event on Clear Lake that was, to me, it was a launching of me as and giving me the confidence as an angler. Uh, when in that first tournament on Clear Lake, that BFL, that was because in, it, in every BFL tournament around the country, everybody's fishing against the best anglers on their lake at that time. Yeah. Um, and that's what's great because you get great competition on a local tournament. So for me to beat the guys on Clear Lake uh, in that tournament, um, said a lot to me it gave me a lot of confidence and i think things kind of started progressing from there and be able to win a red man regional get to the all-american um and i remember actually having the fish on to win the all-american and that was uh, up in La Crosse, wisconsin um but that was just all those little moments in that early in my career just it gives you confidence and just allows you to like man i don't know how i'm doing it but i'm doing it and just keep doing it and, uh, you know, with the FLW side, and, you know, I think uh, the very first year of the FLW tour, when it came out, I was able to try and fish both tours at one time and realized I, I, that's way too many tournaments for me. I don't know how I try to do that. Um, 
but you guys have, uh, you know, FLW has given me, you know, the opportunity in, in the past and, uh, and now we're, you know, we're obviously in the new territory coming up and, but my careers, I've been, been fortunate to have a very, very prosperous career for a kid that's uneducated. And I keep going back to, uh, what you were saying about the, the youth movement. And I want to, I, I personally want to thank you, Chris and FLW for what you have done with the youth movement. You guys have embraced the high school program. When I was in high school, I was, I was a freak, you know, June middle school. It's like, I'd have a, you know, I'd go to school with a tackle box for show and tell, and I have hip <laughs> waders on and my, my, my fishing vest. And uh, when I got to high school, which and, I didn't. And your calves, white birds. Um, I didn't fit in in high school because I had nobody to associate with and I couldn't talk fishing to. And when it got, but I look at the high school programs now, how many high school fishing teams there are. We have over 10,000 high school fishing students signed up for FLW fishing programs around the country. That blows my mind. So it's getting the, the kids, they're getting these kids fishing, they're getting their parents fishing, their siblings, their grandparents. So we're now, we actually do have the, the first time that I look back in my 30 some odd years of doing this, that I've never seen a future of it. We've always seen this decline in fishing license sales. And now all of a sudden now we have this whole youth movement that it's, it's changing. And I, it's, it's so exciting. It's so weird to me. I'm like, where was this when I was a kid? I would have stayed in school if I had a fishing team. Um, so, uh, but it just goes back to it's, uh, it's, it's educating you know, with, um, with internet and social media and what we're doing out there to create uh, excitement for that youth. Uh, it's, we're, it's a whole new generation, but it goes back to, I want to thank you and FLW for inspiring and giving the opportunity for all these kids out there to have the dream. Because I know for me, you know, fishing essentially saved my life and it was my passion. Um, and, and it's just, it's proof that if you have a love and a passion for something, you can make a living doing it. And so now we're given the opportunity and we're creating more dreams for all these kids out there, which is totally awesome. Absolutely, man. You know, last fall, Major League Fishing acquired FLW. And so now we've got that superstructure in place uh, from the high school level through the Yeti college fishing. The, the college fishing stuff is, is great stuff, man. We're seeing some of the best anglers in the world come out of that come out of that circuit, man, and they are competing at very high levels. You can go on to the Phoenix Bass Fishing League, Toyota Series, um, Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit, all the way to the Bass Pro Tour, man. That is, a, that is a great system in place, and I can tell you, these young guys, they can catch them. Yes, it's they the can. in the world, man. <laughs> yes, they, they can. can. They have We've seen what they've done in the last five years. I mean, how many of these guys have come out of the college programs and gone on to win, you know, FLW championships, Bassmaster Classics, or winning titles or winning tournaments. I'm like, oh, these these kids are legit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, hey, Jimmy, your son fished high school, right? He fished at the high school level, now fishing in college. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, you know, they, they say timing's everything, right? Well, he hit... He hit the best timing because, you know, like Steve said, I mean, every, I mean, high school and college fishing is growing so fast. You know, we watched, out here we watched the college fishing. You know, there was Auburn, Alabama, Michigan. There were schools out there, but it was like, you didn't, couldn't comprehend it being on the West Coast. Yeah. Well, now... I mean, it's so big. It's great. There's 64 kids on a high school fishing team in Redding, California. 64. I mean, that's, that's awesome. just crazy. But um, yeah, so, you know, my son, uh, he, he qualified for the high school championship. And, and what an experience, you know, to be able to go back east and fish the championship. And it was him and his partner, uh, Cooper, and uh, we fished. Uh, uh, on your lake there, Kentucky Lake. 
Yep. And, uh, you know, Sheldon, my son, he, uh, they finished 17th out of, I think there was like 300 teams, over 325 teams. And, you know, and it necessarily wasn't about how well he did in the tournament because they did, they rocked it. But it was the experience of getting out of state, just a whole new culture back where you guys live, you know, and, uh, you know, just them being able to see that, you know. So the opportunities just uh, just keep growing and growing. And, of course, after that tournament, you know, he got offered a, a scholarship at Simpson University in Redding, California. And, you know, they're just now starting to put this whole fishing team together. And, <laughs> hey, Chris, their storage units, they have these – um, climate control warehouses for their boats. I'm like, I don't even have that. <laughs> it's like, come on. But anyway, so that's not um, true. You keep your yeah, boat crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't have air conditioning at my office though in the warehouse. So, anyways, hey, it's not your turn right now. You just keep it down. It's my turn. Um, anyway, so, but he, uh, you know, Sheldon, he's doing great. You know, he's uh, he's loving it now. Of course, he's doing the college, and he qualified qualified for the championship, and he went uh, back east last year, you know, representing um, uh, the school. And again, he did really well, top twenty um, out of three hundred votes. So it's just, yeah, I'm proud of proud of the kids. And uh, you know, we had a casting contest at our house the other day, and uh, in the in the pool, and <laughs> my oldest son who never fished a tournament or anything he by far was the best caster by far i'm like you did <laughs> fish a lot didn't you because you know i was busy and proud. i mean i couldn't believe how good he was at casting i'm like this is pretty awesome so but anyway so there's a lot of opportunities out there you know i just got an email about the uh what is it, high school championship in the mississippi river coming up um so anyway so you know again they're gonna have three four hundred teams there from high schools and so and they're giving away three million dollars in scholarships at that event so yeah the sport is uh, the sport is growing it's amazing and you know it's healthier than it's ever been and so it's exciting yeah. times absolutely i was supposed to actually go and uh work that tournament MC that that tournament that high school championship but after the super, right. super tournament yeah. rescheduled it just didn't work out i'm gonna be down with you guys in Tennessee, catching the big bags. Um, so, but I, you know what? That is one of the tournaments I've done. I've done the high school championship weigh-in several times. Um, I've done the college fishing championship. And I tell you, man, those those guys, not only can they catch them, but you can tell they're doing their homework. They speak well on the stage. They've got a lot of energy, a lot of passion. That is the future of our sport. Um, it, you, you can tell, man, it's, it's in their blood. They, they look, they watch you guys at the higher levels, man, and they aspire to be like you guys, man. And I think it's one of those things where we've got the platform for them to reach that level. We do. All the way to Major League Fishing, the Bass Pro Tour, all the way there, man. I think about a guy like Hunter Freeman who won our college championship a few years ago. I think this is his second year now on the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. He's made a couple top tens. Um, but that guy can catch them. And he won that on the Red River down in Louisiana, but you know what? He catches them. He'll catch them deep Clearwater stuff too, Smith Lake in Alabama, Lake Lanier in Georgia. And so these guys are very versatile. They've got all the tools now. They've got technology. They can stay on top of everything now. Um, you guys put out videos on social media. Man, they eat that stuff up. That is their generation. It's a technical generation and they're doing their homework, and you can tell. And then they go out and they apply it on the water. Um, and I think that's uh, the success of it. The future's bright. There's no doubt about it. You know, between the, uh, the high school stuff, our uh, FW High School Circuit presented by uh, Favorite Fishing. Um, college Fishing is Abu Garcia. Uh, college Fishing presented by Yeti. we got the sponsors. We've got the anglers. We have got the platform. And I tell you, FLW has one of the most experienced staffs at every level in the game today. So I, the future is so broad. I'm so excited, man. And this partnership with Major League Fishing, bringing in the biggest names in the world, the icons of our sport. Um, I'm a huge fan of Skeet Reese. You know, always have been. And uh, I think, you know, the way we've got this thing set up now, 
man, we're getting ready to take this thing to a whole another level. It's just, it's, it's really fun to sit back and watch. Keep, what, what's your take on the super tournaments, man? Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, oh, I gotta, let me close out. No problem. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. So, I mean, back to the, the Major League Fishing and FLW merger. Um, it's one of those things where it just seemed like the perfect fit because now the, the grassroots program all the way up to the FLW tour had the, the best grassroots overall fishing program in the country. You guys touch more people and get more people fishing than anybody's ever done. So now to combine that with major league fishing and the media assets there and the Bash Pro Tour, um, it's just, it's a perfect combination because the, the vision of what major league fishing and the Bash Pro Tour had is definitely taking it to a place our sport's never been. I've never, you know, we all thought about it. We all talked about growing the sport and all that. Well, there's, you know, you need two things. You need participation and you need exposure. You need people to watch the sport. And for the first time in my career, we're seeing our viewership go through the roof. Absolutely. So the, the TV program being on Discovery Channel, NBC, uh, Outdoor Channel, Pursue, all of, there's the media platform. I think Major League Fishing has got like 680 some odd hours of airtime. <laughs> it's incredible. So, but it's like this perfect combination. So now there's this graph you're gonna have from high school to college to BFLs to um, Toyota Series to the FLW Tour, the Tackle Warehouse Tour to the Bass Pro Tour and to the Red Crest Championship. So now it's like there's this true legitimate qualifying process that you can work your way up from one level of competition for it's just like any, you know, from minor leagues to major league baseball. So now you're getting there. And so now that kid that's coming in high school, he can see the process. He knows what level he has to go through to be able to come become a professional bass fisherman. And yeah. so that part is exciting. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's, that is, there's a lot of smart people behind the scenes that have worked really hard to make everything come together. I know that. Uh, but obviously this year is, this year is weird. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of different adjectives that we could be using. <laughs> what's going on. COVID-19 <laughs> is, has been the, it's been horrible in so many aspects and is in, the, but there's some, there's so many positives come out of it as well from, Number one is family spending more time together, more so than they've ever spent. Um, there's a lot of pe people fishing a whole lot more than ever before, but um, you know we won't get into all the negative side of it. But um, but COVID nineteen has changed our economy, has changed the world, it's changed the way business is being done, and now with with just everything that's happened this year and. For Major League Fishing, I know we weren't able to meet our TV deadlines um, for the with the tournaments because we're we have it you know it's all based on television, so we we weren't able to make our TV deadlines, so that's why we had to cancel some of the events. People like, well, can't make them up. Well, it's all based for television um, on the on the Bass Pro Tour for the most part. So with sponsors and the economy, everything changing, then it was like. I, I don't know whose brainstorm this was and who came up with the super tournaments, but it was like pretty cool. So, you know, Bass Pro Tour, we weren't going to be able to fish as many events. Um, FLW, uh, Tackle Warehouse Tour wasn't going to be able to do as many events. Well, why not? Let's, let's make the best of this. Yep. And make, yeah, let's do the best we can possibly do with what we are given, the hand we've been dealt this year, and create some – create some excitement and that's what we got so the flw super tournament's coming up is i think we got 56 of the bass pro tour guys coming over um and i want to first i want to say thank you to all the flw anglers uh tackle warehouse tour anglers for allowing us and, and voting and agreeing say yeah you know what let them come over let's have some fun 
It's the three, it's three tournaments. It's not, you know, we're just, that's what it is. And we're going to come over and I'm going to come fish and I get to fish against Jimmy and, 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 <laughs> and there's going to be like, I don't, there's going to be all these guys in my, I'm going to be out of my elements who feel really weird, but <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, there's, it's, it's this merger. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's just this, there's going to be a lot of people meeting for the first time. Um, we're going to be able to create some amazing television, some killer streaming content, um, build a lot of excitement for both sides and, and have some great competition. And, and that's the thing is we're going to have, we got tournaments that weren't going to be able to happen, making them happen and, and make the most of what we got this season. And that's what we're doing. Absolutely. And these three super tournaments truly bring our two companies together into one, MLFLW. It feels like um, having you guys, I was looking down the list of the uh, Bass Pro Tour anglers that were coming and fish with, fishing with us in these super tournaments, man. That, I mean, you guys are some of the most accomplished anglers in the history of the sport. Yourself, top five in money, all the time. I mean, that's incredible. And so, you know what? You guys coming over and fishing these super tournaments and our guys getting to fish against you and to see you and to make those connections and relationships because listen the money in these tournaments is incredible it's yeah, it absolutely is. incredible it's ridiculous man but the but the friendships and relationships that last a lifetime Skip. yeah yeah and that's what it's gonna be i think that's where it's the first time you know since the acquisition and the merger of the two that we have had any kind of mingling so to speak so um, yeah, I think it's going to make everybody feel like they're part of the team now. So we're not just, you know, that tour is over there. This tour is over there. We're, we're all, we're all in this together now. And I think that's where, that's, what's going to be nice about this. And we're realizing that we're all going to get through this. We're all pushing forward together and, uh, we're all going to be pulling the card by the same end of the rope and to get through this, to make the FLW and, and major league fishing tour the best that it can be and better than everything else out there for the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm super stoked about the, uh, about the super tournaments and really about the future. It's all in place, man, for us to build this thing and really take it to, uh, to the next level, which is, uh, which is, I mean, those, those are, those are the things we dream about the major league fishing and FLW, man. And we've got a, we've got this all in place to really, to really accomplish this. Hey, let's talk about uh, let's talk about you guys. Let's go back a little bit. You guys ever been in the boat together, fishing team tournaments? Let's talk about some memories. <laughs> Keep it clean, boys. Keep it clean. Let's talk about some memories. So, no, there's all kinds of stories, but it's like I know Jimmy. He oh. brought he brought up one tournament, and I'll, I'll let him tell a story. But I just remember. So we we're we we're fishing a tournament on Folsom Lake, and I don't know if this, this is going to be one of the stories, but and. Going down the bank, and I was I was fishing a fluke, you know, whatever on fifteen pound test. I had a five out wide gap hook, and I think a fish came up busting out there, man. And I went, <laughs> and I'm like, and it just stops. Fortunately, I put my thumb on the spool. I didn't backlash, but I hear this ski. I look back, and there's a five out buried in his chin back there, just buried, and I'm like. Uh oh, <laughs> and I remember I'm trying to pull, push that hook through the pair of pliers. I am laughing so hard that his chin is going. Uh, he was. I'm literally laughing so hard and my hands jerking. And I was like, "Man, that's really hard to push through his chin. Not to push it all the way through to cut it off." But I just remember that. What? <laughs> so, sorry, Danny. Yeah. What about it, Jimmy? Give us a I think it was a, a seven-inch flute. That, yeah, yeah. I'll never forget that. I always tell that story. Oh, now it's a nine-inch. I'm going to get even because we're going to be – yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be staying together at Mississippi River. We rented a house. And uh, just so you know, uh, you're getting the bottom bunk, all right? And, and yeah, so you're going to get payback. Hey, well, I'm he's getting the bunk. He's, he's getting the bunk because his oversized truck. Yeah, he's getting preferred parking with his oversized truck, so he gets the bunk <laughs> bed. He doesn't know it yet. But anyway, so 
so, God, you know, the, that same lake, yeah, we were free fishing. And, uh, man, we whaled on. I think we won by like eight or 10 pounds. But we, we went all the way up the river and uh, the water was low and we had to go under this bridge. And, and we, it was like an hour into it and we didn't, we hadn't figured it out yet. We had one little fish and I think he was throwing a jerk bait and we just kept moving. We were just moving, moving. And all of a sudden we see this like seven pound largemouth, right? Just kind of swim by the boat. It's like, oh my gosh, look at the size of that thing. <laughs> so, you know, we try to catch it or whatever. We just kept on moving, right? So, so he pulls out this, we're up the river now. He pulls out an orange porco. Is that what it was? It was a porco. Remember that? <laughs> orange porco. I have never had so much fun in my entire <laughs> life catching fish on an orange porco. And it was fish after fish after fish. And I mean, it was just, it was crazy. But I remember coming back down the river and Skeet pulled out a jerk bait. And we kind of said, yeah, remember that big fish was right around there. And he made this long cast and it was like jerk, jerk, jerk. Doom! And I swear it was the same fish, but he ended up catching that fish. And yeah, we had like 27 pounds for seven fish. And, but uh, we had uh, we had a lot of fun fishing team tournaments. Um, uh, we we won a championship. You, you remember the championship we won yeah, on Clear Lake? That was the first. And I, I don't know if that was a seven oh, fish one. Or I, yeah, that was the first boat we won. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I did my free fishing out of a float tube. Wow. And uh, <laughs> I figured out this pattern. <laughs> I figured out this pattern and it was a timing thing. There was like a 45 minute window. And you know, I, I know Ski was shaking his head because he wanted to go there right away because I caught some really quality fish. And I'm like, we can't. We got to wait for the shade line. We got to wait for the shade line. No, we need to go there now before it doesn't matter. We won't catch them until we, you know, the timing's got to be perfect. And uh, sure enough, that first day we waited till the right time. I think it was like 9.15, I remember it vividly. And uh, we went down that 200 yard stretch and we smoked them. Um, and the second day, of course, they weren't there, but we ended up uh, going to Rodman. And it was one of those tournaments where I think, I mean, like 20, I think we won with like 27, 28 pounds for two days on Clear Lake, which is not much. And the fish, if you had five fish, it was really good. We went up into Rodman and we had, we had a secret bait and we smoked. We caught like 40 fish. It was wow. crazy, but they were all two pounders, but that's all we needed to get the tournament one. So remember that secret bait? Yeah, brown orange tail remember. ringworm. That's good yeah. stuff. Secrets out. <laughs> great. Great. No, they don't need it now. Great stories, man. Fun, fun yeah. stuff, man. Hey, real quick. Skeet, fishing hero. Go. Rick Clun. Uh, I read a story about him when I was 12 years old, and that's what inspired me to want to be a professional bass fisherman. I love it. Jimmy Reese, fishing hero. Uh, well, if I say ski Reese, I might get upgraded on the houseboat to a, a queen bed. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, really? You know, I'm not going to go with Rick Flan, but uh huh? Rick Klun is 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 up there on the list, but you know I'm gonna go a West Coast guy, and I always I mean we had some great guys on the West Coast. I'm trying to go quick, but you know I have a lot of I mean I I have a lot of respect for Skeet, and obviously he's always my hero. But you know I'm gonna go with Aaron Martins. I just think I always thought he was just different than everybody else. Um, so you know I'm going with my buddy Aaron. Um, he just he, I just knew. He was different than anybody else and his thought process, which was even different than Clunt, but it was similar, you know, and, and that's, you know, there's so much mental, it's like golf, you know, I, I was yep. a golf professional, you know, the, the whole golf thing is 50% mental and, and, you know, that's, you know, Clunt, Aaron, I mean, they just, they had, they had something totally different than everybody else. 
I love it. Love it, guys. Yeah, Aaron Martin's going through uh, some major health stuff, real life stuff. He's in our thoughts and prayers. I know you guys have dealt with the loss of your dad over the past couple of months, man. You guys are in our thoughts and prayers. Real life stuff, man. And uh, those those things bring us together. It brings the fishing community together as well, man, to support, to support each other. And I want you to know we love you, and both of you guys are awesome. Well, this is this is your time. Skeet Reese, any final words you got for anyone in the FLW universe? Well, um, I'm looking forward to getting out there and fishing the super tournaments with you guys. Um, I don't know if I've ever fished a 200-boat tournament, but excited about that, the challenge. Um, and if you want to learn, you want to see, you want to follow me, just follow and look up Skeet Reese Fishing, all my social media platforms, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube is uh, all Skeet Reese Fishing, so you can follow me there. But most importantly, just, uh, yeah, you want to have some fun next week, follow uh, the heavy hitters, Major League Fishing down in Lake Toho. Um, there's a lot of money up for grabs next week, and hopefully I'm going to be down there jacking on some big ones and uh, – taking home a trophy. I want one of them. I want one of them trophies. So that's it. I, Chris, I just want to thank you for all you do. Uh, your energy level over there is amazing. Uh, I don't know where you get it. I don't know if you just jack up on caffeine all the time, uh, but you, your energy level is awesome. So just keep bringing it. We appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to seeing you at one of the super tournaments. And then until then, as long as I kick Jimmy's butt, that's all that matters. <laughs> I love you, Skeet. That's good stuff, man. Jimmy, final words. Well, just so you know, Skeet, I've been at Chris's house. I know what he drinks, and it's in his fridge. And yeah, just he drinks a lot of iced tea. That's all I'm going to say. So it's a lot of caffeine. Um, no, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Chris. Uh, really appreciate you having us on, and. Uh, you know, I am looking forward to the, the super tournaments and hanging out with Ski and, and, all, the, and all the guys, you know. Um, I think it's going to be a great venue for everybody. So, you know, um, I'm very, very thankful for my wife, my family, and, uh, you know, she is my biggest supporter, Catherine, um, and, you know, and my kids. And so, you know, without their support, um, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Uh, and not just that, but my, you know, my sponsors and, you know, uh, Yamamoto, when they came to me six years ago, hey, what are you doing next year? And, uh, you know, that's what pretty much started the whole journey back east. And so, you know, support of Lawrence and Douglas Rods and Top This and, you know, Usuri, I'm able to go do that. So I'm just uh, very, very blessed. Skeet, I got some uh, Calco's Fishing calling clips because I know you don't have any. But I'm going to let you borrow some because you're going to need some for the tournament. Just so you're you're going to need yeah. those. I you forgot those how to bring your live wells, just so you know. Yeah. I don't know if I remember how to call. I'm like, what do I do hey, here? Make so, sure on the ranger, you, yeah. The ranger, there's a ranger dial where you fill your live wells. You got I know. I got to, yeah, I got to, I got to take all the trash out of there. <laughs> I forgot to use that thing again. <laughs> Man, that is great stuff. And it's five bass. Because Chris, Chris Jones is going to say, Skeet, hold up your two bass bass, but it's a five fish limit, not two, just so you know. <laughs> a five bass limit for Skeet Reese on championship. Yeah! <laughs> oh, man. Hey, this has been too fun, guys. We can do this all day. Man. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Hey, Chris, thanks for having us on. Appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing you. You got it, man. You got you two, Skeet, Jimmy, the Reese brothers, iconic in the bass fishing world. Love them. And uh, listen, for all things fishing, log on to FLWFishing.com. It's the world's most popular competitive fishing website. Join me next week as we'll have a new pro on catching up with Chris Jones. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.